Hi, everyone. Thank you for having some patience with me. Uh, computers are not my uh, strong suit, although I am in IT. So, uh, my name is Sunita Reiter. I am the community manager of OpenStaff, uh, and I work at Aliander. So let's get into a little bit of background. So Aliander is a distributed grid, grid operator. So we are responsible for the distribution of energy in both electricity and gas in about a third of the Netherlands. So I think we all know these kinds of gas. So this is energy consumption on some place in the Netherlands. However, we have no idea what's going to happen in the future. Well, this is where OpenStaff comes in. OpenStaff stands for Open Short Term Energy Forecast. So instead of our question mark, we actually know what's going to happen. So after this very short introduction, let's, tell, uh, let's talk about what I'm going to talk about today. So first of all, I'll start with the challenges on the grid and why we actually need OpenStaff. Then I'll talk about OpenStaff, of course. And finally, I really want to discuss our recent developments uh, and collaborations. So the challenges on the grid. So when everything was still good and easy on the electricity grid, it looks like this. So on the left, you see one big producer, just one direction energy flow, and then we have our consumers. Fairly easy. However, due to the energy transition, I think you're all aware, it looks like this. So very chaotic. So on the production side, we have a distributed production due to our solar and wind both on the mid and low voltage, but also at our consumers. Uh, and on the consumption side, we have the issue that our consumption has exponentially increased. We had a lot about EV charging over here. Well, those electrical vehicles need electricity through the grid. And this is where our capacity issues start. So this is a map of the Netherlands, and I think you can all guess that red is bad. So on the red parts, uh, we actually have no capacity available. So let's say that you want to start a company of one of these areas, we cannot connect you. So you get no power from us because we just simply have none to give. But of course, we are all very smart innovative people, so we have some solutions. So one of these solutions is actually to shave the peak if we expect grid limitations to be surpassed. So on this left image, uh, you see a forecast on the load on, for example, a transformer. Well, we see a very clear peak, and this is where our grid limitations are surpassed. So our solution is just to say, shave the peak. So for example, if this is production, we just ask one of our solar farms to just shut off for a little while. Of course, they get money for this, but that's something else. Uh, and then this is the result. So our grid limitations are not surpassed, and nothing breaks. So great. But then able to do this, we do need to know this left image. So we actually need accurate forecasts. And this is where we have OpenStaff. So again, OpenStaff stands for Open Short Term Energy Forecasting. And let me a little bit explain a little bit more about it. So first of all, what the hell is it? Well, it's a complete software stack to forecast the load on the ele electricity grid, but it's energy forecast, so it could also do it for heat. And it's automated machine learning pipelines. So it's a step-by-step -step process which is automated to make uh, an, uh, a forecast. So in these dark blue boxes is all everything that OpenStaff can do, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. So what does the software look like? So first of all, you need a database. This is one that you have to make yourself, of course. But we do have OpenStaff DBC, OpenStaff Database Connector. And this is able to get all of your data from your database. And then we get into OpenStaff. I already talked about pipelines, so of course, these are in the uh, software overview. And these are part of the tasks orchestration. Then we have data pre-processing, which includes data validation. So for your example, if you see a lot of flatliners, we're able to ca cancel these out of your input data. And then we have something very interesting, feature engineering. So in this feature engineering, we're, for example, able to calculate the wind speed at the height of a windmill from the wind speed on the ground. And we're also able to calculate the lag load for one timestamp. And then, of course, we're machine learning pipelines, so we have some machine learning in there. So we're using open source models, such as XGBoost, to make our machine learning models. 
So we're able to train, optimize hyperparameters, of course make a forecast, and we're also able to make a split forecast to our DESLS model. And finally, we are able to evaluate our forecast, store our model, and do some post-processing. So let's look into the methodology on a really high level. So on the left, uh, we have our target, the load. This is where we actually want to forecast. Then we have some external predictors. So we have our weather forecast, market prices, and typical profiles of companies and households. From these external predictors, we can actually calculate our derived features. So this is the feature engineering I just talked about. So we're able to calculate lag loads for each timestamp, uh, but also to have some derived weather features, such as, for example, the wind speed at the height of a windmill. And furthermore, calendar info. It really matters if you are forecasting on a Sunday or Christmas compared to a Monday. And then we can train a single model for all our lead times. So here you can see what the data, for example, looks like. So you have a daytime with increments of 15 minutes, our target, uh, and external predictors. You can also see here that we have the Dutch energy prices in there. Um, so if you have multiple training horizons, we just simply duplicate our data and use this for our training horizons. And then, if there are questions about it, please ask me in the break, but I don't have time to go into this in 15 minutes. We can, with our trained model, now actually make this forecast. And of course, we want it to look Nice. So we have this beautiful Gravana dashboard, which actually summarizes all of the information that you need for your forecast. Um, so let's look into it. First and foremost, our forecast. So the red line on the left is actually the load that has been historically measured. And then we see here the yellow lines is our forecast. Well, now you see that there are a lot of yellow lines. What do those mean? Well, those are actually the quantiles. So you have actually a certainty uh, in your forecast. And this can be actually useful if for a certain location you're quite sure what your forecast is going to be. You can go into another quantile than if you have a location where you have a lot of factors that you actually don't know anything about. And also very nice, our feature importance plot. So here in the feature importance plot we can see our lag loads uh, and some other uh, features. And this is actually uh, nice, so you can see for every location which features are important for your forecast. So, for example, here we see radiation. I don't think it's readable for you, but it says radiation. And so you know that there are quite some uh, solar uh, parks or solar panels behind, for example, your substation. Uh, wind speed is nowhere to be seen, so probably no windmills in that area. So this was really short about open staff. Let me see how much time I have left. Six minutes, perfect. Okay, so community and upcoming events. One of the main things that has uh, really changed uh, in OpenStaff this last year is our community. So before it was just Oleander who actually created it together with RTE uh, working on OpenStaff. Uh, and now it looks like this. So let me go over every company really quick. So Oleander, that's where I'm from, talked about that enough. RTE actually working on OpenStaff for quite a while and they're actually ready to implement it very soon. RT International just joined us this year. They have a very nice proof of concept and they're gonna work on it further. Fidon has actually been using OpenStaff quite long. I've heard some terms leechers this today. Well, that was uh, Fidon uh, up to uh, actually a month ago. So we contacted them and they were like, oh yeah, we found some bugs, we fixed it. We can implement this. So they actually joined our community as of this year. Sigum is still working on a proof of concept and seeing if they want to replace their own forecasting model with OpenStaff. And Shell is working on OpenStaff DBC and uh, seeing if they can uh, use their method of data important. Now, I hope everyone feels like they want to try OpenStaff. Uh, well, you're in luck because we are organizing a workshop. So on the Friday, the 1st of March from 2 to 4, uh, we were organizing a workshop uh, and I would like everyone who's interested to join. Uh, so you'll get a better introduction to OpenStaff and also a little bit more of the technical details. Uh, it will be virtual uh, and you will get a really a hands-on experience. So you get some example notebooks from us uh, where you have to make your own 
exercises and you can actually make your own forecast with OpenStaff and see how easy it is. If you want to sign up, just scan the QR code over here uh, and it will be very nice. I also have it on the next slide for people who are too slow. So, want to, more, want to know more about OpenStaff? Maybe even before you sign up for the workshop? We, of course, have our we GitHub website, documentation, etc. You're only one command away from using OpenStaff. Uh, and if there's anything you want to ask or give some comments or anything, you can just send me an email uh, or send me a message on LinkedIn. So thank you for your time, and I welcome any questions. Who's running the uh, microphone? I'll try to do my best. Please feel free to guess to oh, yeah. find the best path. Hello. First of all, thank you so much. This was very interesting. And I have no experience, have never heard of OpenStaff before reading on the Fostum website. I have one question about the data collection. Do you provide like some examples or standards on how and where to fetch data because the data sources vary? I tried, I looked. <laughs> So a very good question, I think. This is something that a community indeed struggles with. So for the Netherlands, we actually do have those sources because we are using them ourselves. For other countries, we're still working on it to see if we can find some open uh, data for everyone. Uh, but if you're interested, you can always send me an email and I'll see what we have. Uh, yeah, great. Hi, it's Mine. I'm uh, from Red Hat. So obviously I will ask the question about scaling this, right? How will you standardize and scale this? Because as a project, it sounds super interesting, but how are we going to scale this to 49,000 uh, substations or millions of uh, smart meters at home? Yeah. Very good question. This is actually something we're working on right now. Um, so we are actually employing uh, our open staff stack on Dexter probably anytime soon and seeing if we can actually scale from that. Currently, uh, we have it scaled up at, I think, 100 substations. Uh, and if you're curious how we have a reference implementation on our GitHub, and you can see all the information there on uh, how we deploy this. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, uh, can you pass it? Sure thing. Uh, I have a question about the data sources. Um, is there any uh, thought given to adding geographical information systems uh, data into the system for forecasting models? Because especially stuff like wind and uh, solar radiation also not just depend on the time of day and the wind speeds, but the location itself. Great question. Yeah, actually, um, for our system, it just connects to the closest KNMI, so that's the Royal Dutch Weather Organization. So it's able to find the closest station to where you actually want to forecast. So it definitely takes uh, uh, location to account. We have a, a prediction job class where you can put in all of the information for your forecast, and in there you also put the latitude and longitude of your location. So it does take that into account. Question over there. <laughs> Le oh, okay. Thanks for the question about the geographic data, because I was thinking about an approach of just using cheap raspberry weather stations in Austria and distributing them across some locations to fetch the data, because I have the Google Weather API and the Open Weather API, whatever, as comparison values. And for the, the geographic thing, thanks for the question, how would you connect that? Like, is this a plan of OpenStaff? Did I miss this? Yeah, thanks for the kind of difficult question because I don't know the answer. Um, so I'll ask my colleagues who actually made this part of the of OpenStaff, and I'll get back to you if we connect afterwards. So then you'll know. But it's very interesting to do with the Raspberry Pi things. Thanks. <laughs>